In this video, we're exploring how to get detailed information out of a long conversation with a large language model. Because the problem that I often find is that I've got information that it's forgotten about from earlier in the conversation, or when I try to bring in information from earlier in the conversation, it brings in the information that we explored, but deemed irrelevant at the time, yet it still thinks it's important. I'm Appy Dave, I talk about prompt engineering, so please like and subscribe and let's get into it. Today I'm in the middle of cleaning up a lot of my chats and the one that I'm looking at today is synthesizing a conversation down to the raw information. Now the reason this is important for me is that I've got hundreds of chats over here on the left. I've got a dozen projects going on and one of those particular projects is called Fly Video. And then when I go into Fly Video, I've got all these conversations. A lot of them have the same information and I'm trying to bring this information together. So what I thought I'd do is look at this particular particular one which is called project naming conventions for fly video and see whether I can get all the information that's in here and ignore some of the stuff that I said wasn't relevant when I was doing the conversation so that I've got a final markdown document that I can use as knowledge for future chats. I put chapter cards down below if you want to move forward. In the next step, what we're going to do is look at the complex conversation. And this is important if you want to understand all the details that are going into bringing this together as one document. But if you just want to get straight to the prompts, technique one is where we cherry pick a little bit of the information and we use an advanced prompt. Technique two is where we just use an advanced prompt and a application that I built to grab conversations. And technique three is where I use a combination of ChatGPT, Canvas, and notebook. Now the conversation we're looking at today is of medium size. It's not a large conversation, but there's enough detail in it to test out some ideas. And when you look at my conversations, they'll often start with information that I preload it with from previous conversations. And what it's done in this particular case is figured out a bunch of information. It's assuming that I'm working with project names for an organization. There's a concept of a sequence number, the YouTube channel, which was an older channel called Appycast. We got the name of the project and we got the fact that it's got a status of completed and it's worked out this information. Now I know that this is not the way I do things today and further on in this conversation, we change things around and it's kind of getting to that end result of what the information really should be while taking into consideration my thoughts during the conversation that we're trying to solve. Now the initial analysis in this conversation is that there was a sequence, a project code, a name and a status. This was for a video project, but that there was also the concept of multiple episodes within a video series and that they would have a sequence like the first, the second, the third, followed by the name of that particular episode. Now the conversation has shown some folder structure examples, whether it be for a single video concept where I'll have individual recordings and particular chapters, and there could be more than one recording for a chapter. And then it's got another example for multiple episodes where it's pretty much the same structure, but they're broken up into more than one episode. And this information is going to be really important for me. I asked it to write a requirements document and it wrote a whole lot of good and useful information. I was able to read this and go, this is kind of what I want the application to do. But then it came to a problem here is that it wrote a bunch of code for me, which is great, except it's not in the programming language I want. So I need to make sure that whatever final document we get is in the actual programming language I need. Next, I was asking the conversation to rename the project code to a channel code. And I had codes for Appy Dave Coding, Appy Dave, the channel you're using right now, AI TLDR, Fly Video, and Winning Prompts, which are all faceless YouTube channels. And I needed to keep this information grouped. So the conversation adapted to understand that there were channel codes going on in various locations. So it was giving me an improved requirements document, but it was still keeping to the Python implementation. Now, if you've ever done a long conversation in a large language model, you've probably seen these problems before where you get a diminishing return on the information you put in because it's forgetting or changing the information that you'd already talked about. So let's try a couple of techniques and bring this back into alignment 
in new chat windows. So let's have a look at technique one and technique one in this particular scenario will probably work the best because I've got a fairly clean conversation and I kind of know where it diverged. So what I've done is I'm just taking the last section and I'm copying it into the clipboard for now. And then what I can do is just head over to a new chat GPT conversation and I'll say, can you create a readme document with the following information? And we can just paste all that information that we've got. Now there's a capability within chat GPT of going to canvas mode. And this is a great way for creating documents, in this case, a requirements document. And you can see it just all coming together before your eyes like this. Now, one of the things I know should be wrong with this is there won't be any code because the section that I grabbed didn't have any code. So we now have this nice consolidated document. All the information is fairly correct except for the missing code and we have a little copy button up in the right hand corner which would give it to us in markdown but what we can do now is just have a little bit more of a conversation and make sure that the code is added to this document now the next thing i want to do is go back in the conversation to where there was some code that was useful now the code is a fair way up and it doesn't take into account certain newer concepts that are later in the document. We'll take a copy of it and come back to our window where we said, can you update the document with the example code? And we're about to paste that in and I'll put it in right here. But the next thing I've also said is it needs to be updated to understand the concept of tags because I know that wasn't in the code. So we can see that the document itself has all information with rules about tags, but the code doesn't. So if we just press go on this, what should start to happen is we'll get a rewrite of the requirements document. Nothing should really change. Everything should be just the way it was originally written. But when we get towards the bottom, I'm assuming we're going to get the code that I've pasted in modified so that it understands the concept of flexible and optional tags. So when we move to the bottom, we've got an example in Ruby. It'd be important to see if it's got tags. So we'll just do search and anything yellow is actually indicating that we've got tags in the code and we've even got examples. So technique number one has worked really well in this particular scenario. What we can do now is just go over to our project. This is the one we were using. We've got two options with this. We could either archive it, but for now I'm just going to rename it and we'll just call it old. And that just reminds me that I should archive it in the future or delete it. Now let's look at technique. Technique number two, and technique number two is actually really simple, but it doesn't always work depending on the length of the conversation. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go to the top of the conversation, go all the way to the bottom, and we've just shift selected it. And I've pressed Command C to put in my clipboard. So with this technique, I've gone back to the Fly video project, and I've just put in a simple prompt. Summarize and synthesize the conversation into a coherent document. Now, one of the things that we've got to do is make sure that it prioritizes the stuff at the end, but but considers the stuff at the beginning so it needs to retain key insights early on and what we can do is just paste all the information and it's quite a long document into it and see what it comes up with now it's going straight into canvas mode i didn't have to tell it what to do and we're getting similar information to before so i think to test this we'll just compare it to the other document that we created so the one on the right is our new document the one on the left here is the old document that we've generated with quite a bit of control in the process and as we look through it they look to be very similar so we've got a sequence channel code and channel name over here and we've got the sequence channel code and project name here then we've got what happens if the channel code is omitted and we've got that example here as well now as we move down this document we start getting confirmation that this particular prompt which was easier is actually working fairly well and that's because we're seeing the tag one and two now they both have the tag one and two but this was right at the very end of the conversation there was a lot of information to read beforehand and it still got it quite correct it even included the correct tags that we had in the examples the cta and the end cards we move further down to where the folder naming conventions are and there seems to be no difference between both of those so we'll come down to the message prompt and we're just going to copy and paste the one that we used in the previous example and see whether it updates it down the bottom with this new code 
So I was just doing the regular rewrite that canvas and we're about to hit the end where I'm assuming example code is about to be written and it's written it in a totally different fashion. Just for my own peace of mind, I took all the information that's on the left and just said, can you update the code with this? And it did it and it did it in an interesting way, which I'm happy with in that it took the individual functions that we can see all grouped together and put them into the correct spot. So everywhere we're talking about an idea, there's one example of code that implements and that keeps getting repeated all the way through to the bottom. Now, before moving on to technique three, let's just recap what we've done. So in technique number one, we cherry picked. We firstly picked the end of the conversation with a lot of information, said write it in Canvas, and then we manually added in code from an earlier section. With technique number two, this was a one-shot prompt. We just said, read the entire conversation, based on a couple of rules and recreate it for us. And it did a perfect job as well. We did have to manually add the code back in, but it did it in a unique and interesting way based on the first technique. Now we're about to look at technique number three, which is a variation on the one shot prompt, but with different tooling. But I think it's at this point that it'd be good to go and have a look at these requirements documents and understand why it's so important to create this sort of information. So we know from the previous example that we could go and select all the information and put it into the clipboard. But what if I told you I'd written a little application using a requirements document that did this for me plus more. So what we can do here is we can go and click on this little button up here and I've got this idea called PPT conversation. I can just press the extract conversation and now the whole conversation is copied to the clipboard. And the good thing is it's also labeled with information. So there's the user with the content that the user said, followed by the agent with the information that the agent said. But this could do more. We could send it off to another application if we want. And the great thing is it was done with one prompt in about 10 minutes. That's the power of these requirements documents because if you can write one of these correctly, you don't need to be a programmer to write applications. You can take information like this, feed it into an AI pair program and create an application in one, maybe two prompts. So what I've decided to do next year in 2025 is reactivate a channel that I have called winning prompts to solve simple automation problems that I have and other people have using one-shot prompting and writing. So if that's of interest to you, then please like and subscribe over on Winning Prompts. Now let's check out Technique 3. We're still going to use a one-shot prompt, but we're going to use different tooling. So we'll come over and we'll click the Extract Conversation. You could just copy all the text and put it into the clipboard and then head over to Notebook LM, click on this button and it'll take you to a blank setup. From here we can create and what we need to do first is load it up with knowledge. So we'll click on the paste text and we'll just paste everything in. Things to notice is that because we use the extraction tool we'll have we'll have access to the user right here. We've got two different participants in the conversation, the user and the assistant. And I consider the assistant to be the one that wrote the document, but the user guided it. So there's a little bit of influence that the user needs to have when we start working with it. And you'll see this pasted text. It's got a description of what's going on. And what we'll do is we'll paste in the prompt that we used the last time, summarize and synthesize. We want to make sure it prioritizes recent ideas over earlier stuff. And we'll just add a little bit extra to the prompt, just letting it know that the assistant wrote the document, but the user's input is considered important. From there, we can just let it start processing. Now we have a very different outcome to the last two examples in that we don't have a requirements document in markdown format but what we do now have is a well analyzed document and we can go through and click on numbers here and go to the sources in the document. You can also come down to here and have a look at specific areas. So let's say we wanted to look at the project naming we could click on that and it'll just do a prompt into the conversation, discuss project naming. And now we've got all the information related to project naming all in one spot. But the other good thing is as we click through on this, we can go and look at the sources around where the episode name was conversed. So the ability to learn about your document is really easy to do in Notebook LM. Now let's see if we can convert it into a requirements document. So what it will do is write a technical requirements doc based on the analyzed content and format using Mark 
cut down. I'm sure you use short code examples related to the section of the requirements. So I like that second version where we got the code with each bit of writing in the markdown document and we'll just let it run. And I've just brought it back to ChatGPT so that I can see it with similar format. But the document on the left is the Google LM. I've just pulled it in and read it and then converted it to markdown here. The one on the right is the one shot from ChatGPT. And the main thing that I start to see is that they're very similar, but they do write a little bit differently. So when we look at the overview, we've got everything the same in both, except there is a little bit of extra information about talking about supporting the reverse engineering. The project naming is the same, slightly different formatting. There is a little bit of extra information in the chat GPT around an example, but it's essentially the same. Episode naming is similar, but the chat GPT is a little bit better. It's got example input ideas it's also got better formatting i think for the output chat gpt did a better job on the recording name and then when we get down to the folder structure it has a folder structure but we don't really get a folder structure from the google notebook lm otherwise a lot of things are similar when we get to the very bottom where we've got the non-functional requirements we have that on both but we get a technical specification as well in the google so ultimately the output from chat gpt is a little bit better than the output from notebook lm but the fact that Notebook LM has the ability for us to interrogate information and of course the other tools like the podcasting means it's still a useful tool just I wouldn't create the requirements document right now just using this tool if that's all I needed. So an overview of what we've been doing is we've taken a complex conversation and we've tried to synthesize it into a new document and the document in this case is a requirements document but it could be any sort of document. Now the first example we did was cherry picking so we picked the area towards the end of the document and then when we found it didn't have all the information we wanted, we added in some extra code. Then after that, we went on to the one shot prompt. And in this particular example, it did just as well. It was actually a really good job. It didn't include the code, but we were able to add that manually. We then moved on and tried a different technique, which is notebook LM. And it does nearly as good a job. It also has the benefit that you can interrogate the document afterwards, but I don't think it proved to be better in the scenarios that we just tried with. So in this video, we've taken this one complex conversation and converted it into a single requirements document. But what I'd like to do in the next video is go through multiple input sources and see if we can bring them in together and end up with one document that covers the whole project. I'm Happy Dave. Please like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.